In this video, I'll break down how to use this really cool ultimate plugin bundle for Final Cut Pro on my digital store. Now, when you buy this really cool pack, you're gonna have a whole bunch of plugins and a whole bunch of presets. I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to, first of all, how to install these effects, and also I'm gonna go over each individual effect and just give you an overview of what each, each effect uh, does. Now, once you buy the pack, you're gonna have two zip files. You're gonna have a plugin zip file and a preset zip file. If you're not aware of how to like unzip a file, all you wanna do is you wanna click on the zip file and you're just going to double click on the zip file and there we go you're going to unzip as you see you have the ultimate bundle and you also come with a second one which will be all of the presets now first of all let me show you how to install plugins so as you can see if i open up the folder here are all the different effects that it comes with if i open up each individual folder as you can see this is what it should look like it should have this logo right here which means it is in a, in a plugin so it's going to go in your motions template folder not in your presets folder so let's go ahead and just use the arrow keys to go out now first of all let me show you how to install plugins so what you want to do is you want to head over here to the go tab select on go what you want to do is click on home so select on home then you want to do is you want to head over here to movies double click on movies and you should have a motions template folder if you don't have it, you can create one now when you create you want to make sure if i go over here click on get info you want to make sure it says motion templates dot localized that is really important so you want to make sure it has that dot localized if i open it up you should have all these different folders now if you don't you should be able to create these folders yourself now we're going to put all these in the effects folder so if you if you don't have this folder again you can right click click on get info and you want to make sure it says effects dot localized that is really important so go ahead and just close it out and then open up the folder and as you can see the ultimate bundle is right here along with all of my other plugins so all you want to do is just drag this folder into your effects folder or you can drag each individual effect if you want to do it or you can actually create your own folder in the effects folder and then drag the effects into that folder but the main thing is is you want to put all of these plugins in your effects folder in your motions template folder now I'm going to go ahead and show you how to install presets one thing to note is it's really important that you're running the latest version of Final Cut and before you install these plugins make sure you close out a Final Cut install the plugins or presets and then reopen Final Cut now I want to show you how to install presets which is a little more difficult than plugins so what you want to do is you want to click on the finder app so click on the finder app what you want to do is head over here to Applications. so select on applications what you want to do is head over here to go now you want to hold down the option key so if I hold down the option key as you can see the library tab will come up so select on library and once you're on library what you want to do is you want to open up application support you want to open up the pro apps folder and then you should have an effects presets folder if I go ahead and open up the effects presets folder as you can see here are all the presets so like I showed you before I showed you the icon of a plugin well if you see this icon or if you're when you download an effect it looks like this this is a preset so it's going to go in your effects presets folder not your motions template folder now you don't want to drag the entire folder into this that might still work what I would do is I would just take all the presets out of the folder and then just install all these presets into this folder right here as you see just just like I have it right here so simply all you're going to do is take your presets put in your effects presets folder and you should be all good to go as you can see camera shake zero to blur effect as you can see slide shake all of my presets are all in here that is really important so make sure you read the description of the product when you buy it the, well one of these are going to be presets and then one of these are going to be plugins and they're installed completely separately there are or there's different ways to install them now what's really important again make sure you're running the latest version of Final Cut if you're doing all that and follow this process running the latest version of Final Cut and close out Final Cut and reopen it when you install the plugins you should be all good to go if you have any problems or you run into any issues let me know and I'll go ahead and help you fix them so as you can see here are all of the effects and the presets that are going to come in my bundle I'm going to quickly break down all these different effects and just kind of give you an overview of what all these effects do and a couple little tips and tricks so the first effect I'm going to go over is this really cool stroke effect so as you can see I'll go ahead and zoom into the timeline and I basically just have it on on this text layer. Now, I, obviously, I create a compound clip to animate the scale. But if we open up the compound clip and we just select on the text layer, you can see it has this really cool like outline effect, and that is just from this really cool stroke effect. So if I go ahead and disable it, as you can see, there's no outline around the text. But if I go ahead and enable it, you have this really cool like outline around the text. You can go through and you can adjust the width. You can also go through and adjust the color. So that is the really cool stroke effect. Now we go ahead and head out. Go to the back arrow. As you can see, there we go. Now we have this really cool like outline effect around the text. Now, the next effect I want to go over is this really cool like pro mist filter. Now obviously you would normally use an actual pro mist filter, but let me show you how to.
how to create it digital. So we wait for Final Cut to render. As you can see, this really cool like pro mist filter. So I go ahead and just disable um, the top clip. I'll go ahead and just disable it right here. So you can kind of see what this effect actually does. So if I go ahead and disable it. As you can see, we can select on this clip right here and you have this really cool like glow outline around the subject. So if I disable it and then enable it, you can see it creates this really cool glow. And now you can go ahead and just simply adjust the threshold. You can make it like really, you can make it like have a really uh, strong glow or you can go ahead and decrease the glow so it's not that noticeable. You can also head over here to amount. You can increase the amount to make it you know brighter or just depends on what you want but that is a really cool effect you can literally create a pro mist filter completely digital which i think that's really cool the next effect i want to go over is this really cool like soft glow effect so as you can see this has this really cool like glow effect on the clip so we go in here before and then after it just creates a very soft it's not super noticeable it's a very subtle effect and all i did was just increase the amount of the soft focus effects of the soft uh, focus effect i think this is really cool it's a really subtle effect but i think it's just a really cool effect the next effect I'm going to go over is really cool like CRT TV effect. So if I go ahead and disable as you can see this is the before and this is the after. It just creates like a really cool like all those like really cool like lines. These really cool glitch effects you can see right here. It just creates a fake like CRT TV effect. You can head over here to the fisheye radius and adjust that until you get the look that you want. But I just think this is a really cool effect and you can adjust the scan lines. You can like have it super saturated or super desaturated. It just depends on your look. I think it's just a really cool subtle uh, effect. If we go over here to the stop motion effect as you can see here is the after but we go ahead and just disable the stop motion effect as you can see it's just a normal clip so you see it's just a normal clip it's not shot in a low frame rate it's just a normal clip but if you apply this really cool stop motion effect you can fake stop motion which i think is really cool now all you want to do is just the lower the number the slower it's going to be so for example i have it at three frames per second if we play the clip this is what it looks like it's just a really cool fake stop motion effect the next effect i want to go over is really cool like film halation effect effect so as you can see it just it's again this is also a very subtle effect too we go ahead and zoom in you can see it creates this really cool like red blur outline to the subject before and then after it's a really small subtle effect but it's just really cool all you want to do is you want to uncheck all of these settings only check blur red and then just increase the amount to your liking i think that's really cool the next couple effects i want to go over are these really cool like glow effects so you can see here's the glint so here's before and then here's after all you really want to do is you want to uh, uh, mess with the intensity and you can mess with the tint it's just a really simple glow effect the next one we'll go over it's really cool like dazzle effect so as you can see right here now all you want to do here is you want to just bring down the uh, the uh, threshold so you see if you go right here or see, all you want to do is really adjust the threshold and you can mess with a whole bunch of other settings i think it's just a really cool simple glow effect the next effect i want to go over is really cool like strobe flicker effect so if we go ahead and play the video as you can see here is the strobe flicker effect and if we go ahead and just disable you if we go ahead and just disable the, the uh, strobe flicker effect it's just a simple um video clip so basically what you want to do is you want to apply this effect onto a clip and then you want to place the the uh, the clip with the uh, strobe flicker effect on top of just like as you can see there's no effects on this bottom clip just going to place it on top and all you can do is just simply adjust the speed so it just depends on how fast you want the flicker effect to happen i think that's just a really simple really cool effect the next step i want to go over are these really cool like transitions now a couple of these are effects and a couple of these are presets the first two i'm going to go over are just effects so that's the page curl and the offset effect so you can see i just have two clips right here this is just one simple clip and i just took the blade tool and just cut the and just kind of split the clip up and then uh, on the the second clip that i split it up i just simply applied the page curl effect so we go ahead and get remember these are the same two clips i just simply use the blade tool to split them in half and then I just place them on top of a second clip so we go ahead and play the video as you can see you just have this really cool like page curl effect so i go ahead and just dis disable the page curl effect you can go ahead as you can see nothing really happens so we go ahead and play the clip. It's lagging a little bit, but nothing is going to happen with the um, clip. So you don't really have to do much customization with the page curl effect. You can just simply apply the clip. So we apply the effect onto the clip. So if we go ahead and play the video. As you can see, nothing is happening. But if we enable the page curl, it obviously creates like a page curl effect. But you can also use this effect on like a freeze frame. I have a whole video showing how to do that, which is a really cool effect. Instead of having to actually print out pieces of paper, you can actually fake it with just using this effect with a freeze frame. There are a whole bunch of different things you can do with it. You can make 
make it look really advanced or just really simple. This is just using the effect at a very simple level. And I would also encourage you to add some motion blur on top of it, just to help make a look, just help to make it look a lot better. The next effect I'm gonna go over is this really cool like offset effect. So all you wanna do is just simply like a place, apply the um, effect onto your actual clip. And then all you wanna do is you wanna see, you wanna place a keyframe at vertical or horizontal offset. So place a keyframe right here, and then you wanna go to the end of wherever you want the effect to stop happening, and then just obviously adjust it. So in this case, I had a keyframe to negative 200. You want the numbers to end in like 100, so 100, 300, 400, negative 500, negative 600. You want to end in some sort of 100 number. So if you go ahead and play the clip right here, you can see I just keyframe the vertical offset. Watch this number right here. As you can see, I just simply place a key from the vertical offset. So applying this effect onto your clip is not gonna actually do anything. You have to actually create keyframes. Now I wanna go over these really cool presets. So what you wanna do is you wanna just take an adjust layer and you just wanna place it in between the two clips. So we go over here to the adjust layer. Uh, now this is a free plugin from Ryan Nagel. So what we're gonna do is you can see right here, this is what the transition looks like. So if we go ahead and play it right here, it creates this really cool like directional blur. So let's just go ahead and just delete this and show you how to do it. So delete the adjustment layer. What you wanna do is you wanna head over here to the adjustment layer, drag an adjustment layer on top of your clip. And what you wanna do is select the adjustment the adjust layer and click on Control D6 and then click Return. All we did was we set the duration of the adjustment layer to six frames. Now you wanna do one, two, three, three frames, place a marker. So all you're doing is you're placing the middle of the adjustment layer in between your two clips. So three frames on top of clip number one and three frames on top of clip number two. Now what you wanna do is head over here to the effects panel. And then what you wanna do is you should have this essentials transitions tab. Then we're gonna go ahead and just apply the blur effect. So apply the blur onto the adjustment. Just simply take the presets and then simply apply it onto the adjustment layer. And as you can see, we go ahead and play the clip. Now you have this really cool blur with this really cool so you see we have this really cool blur, camera flash, prism blur, and like this inverted flicker. So all you can do is place the adjustment layer like I showed you before, and then just take the presets and then just drag it onto the adjustment layer. As you can see, we have a blur effect. We have a camera flash. We have an RGB, uh, RGB blur. We have inverted flicker. We have zoom in three frames, zoom in six frames. So obviously if it says um, three frames, what you want to do is you just want to place the first three, you just want to place it on top of clip number one. If it says three frames, this is what it should look like. If it says six frames, this is what it should look like. Now the next effect I wanna go over, it's really cool like camera shake effect. So if I go ahead and play the video, this is what it looks like. So you see the, the, the whole like screen, it just shakes. Now let me just break down how I did this. Now what you wanna do is you wanna, you wanna take an adjustment layer and you wanna set it to six frames. You want the first two frames to be top on to, to be on top of clip number uh, one, and you want the last four frames to be on top of clip number two. So for a total of six frames, and I always like putting a marker there just to like just it makes it a lot easier. Now what you're gonna do is head over to the effects, and you're gonna apply camera shake zero two or camera shake zero one. You're gonna simply take the preset, and you're just gonna drag it on top of this adjust layer. Now what this preset is is I just like keyframed the position and the so just kind of like keyframe the position so instead of you having to do that i just create a preset so like i showed you before the directional blur you're simply going to take the preset and you're going to drag it on top of the adjustment layer and then it will automatically create a really cool like camera shake effect so i go ahead and play it right here as you can see there we go there's a really cool like camera shake effect now what what you want to do too is you want to obviously apply some motion blur to help the animation look a lot better but you also want to take another adjustment layer and you want to place it on top of both clips now what you want to do with this adjustment layer is you want to increase the scale to 125%. If I go over here and click on the adjustment layer and I disable it, as you can see, actually this is like a better example, you're not, basically what's gonna happen is if you don't add the adjustment layer on top of both clips, you're gonna see some like black edges and it's just not gonna look as good. So obviously taking adjustment, you're just gonna increase the scale of both clips. That way you don't see any of those like black edges or black, you know, you can see part of like those black bars. It's just gonna obviously look a lot. Better. The last thing I want to go over are these really cool like crazy camera shake transitions. So what you're going to do is go ahead and let's just delete this motion blur. And what you're going to do is you're going to take an adjustment layer. Now this is the kind of the same uh, way to do it for this one. What you're going to do is you're going to take the adjustment layer, you're going to place it on top of the clip. Now what you're going to do is you're going to click on the adjustment layer, click on Control D, and then click on 7, and then click on Return. So we set the duration of the adjustment layer to 7 frames. What we're going to do is we're going to go forward with the arrow keys on our keyboard, one, two, three, and place a marker. So you have three frames right here, and then you have four frames right here. We go ahead and place it, and we're gonna place it in between clip number one and then clip number two. So it makes you just placing the middle of the adjustment, uh, the adjustment layer, so one, 
two, three, and then one, two, three, four. And there we go. Now all you want to do is head over here to the effects panel. You want to scroll down until you find crazy shakes. Now what we're going to do is we're going to apply the zoom twist shake. So again, just like the camera shake zero one and zero two, all you're going to do is you're going to take the preset. You're just going to select on the preset and you're just going to drag it on top of the adjustment layer. That's all you're going to do for the camera shakes or any of my like presets. Now if we go ahead and play the clip, as you can see, now you have this really cool like shake. If we go ahead and disable the adjustment layer, here is the before. And then here, as you can see, here is the after. So we go ahead and play the clip. As you can see, there we go. Now you have this really cool like shake effect. Now to make it look even better, we're gonna head over here to motion blur and let's apply moderate motion blur or we can apply moderate motion blur too. So let's apply motion blur on top of the, the adjustment layer. We're gonna go ahead and just simply trim the motion blur because we only want the motion blur on top of the actual like animation or the camera shake. Now we go ahead and play it right here. As you can see, that looks a lot better. As you can see, it adds a little bit of blur and just overall smooths out the transition. Play it right here. There we go. It's just a really cool like camera shake transition. I have a whole bunch of them in my really cool crazy shake preset pack with a total of 10 transitions. Now a couple other effects I want to go over is the transform effect and the light sweep effect. So if we go ahead and head over right here, as you can see, click on this like uh, I've just said this logo right here and I apply the transform effect. So if we go as you can see right here, all I did was I place the keyframe on rotation so i place a keyframe on the x rotation as you can see and i just simply animated my logo right there so it's a really cool effect of you if, let's go over here to give you a better example if we go over here and apply the trans so see i apply the transform effect what you can do is you can see you have a whole bunch of really cool parameters if we go to rotation as you can see i can rotate on the y axis i can rotate it on the z axis so it's just basically like i took apple motions parameters and put them into final cut just so you have a lot more control over the scale, the rotation, the shear, all that kind of stuff. I just thought that was a really cool thing to use and it's just really helpful. I, I don't really know why Final Cut doesn't already have that already implemented into the clips but for or into final cut but there we go that just, just save you a lot of time so you can create those really cool like 3d rotation effects now what i also did too was i applied this light sweep effect so we go right here as you can see i have this really cool like light sweep. you see right here this really cool light sweep so here is before and then here is after so it's just a really cool like light sweep effect that just kind of like shines over the logo this is an effect that is normally in after effects but i created it for final cut and the last thing i want to go over is a really cool way to use like the stroke and the outer glow effect. Let me just give you a basic idea of how to do that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna select on this right here, select on this clip, and we're just gonna go ahead and just simply duplicate the clip right here. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna select on the top clip, or you can also use this for like a freeze frame transition. Now I'm gonna do a very, very basic idea of how to do this. You can obviously take a lot more time, but I know I've seen people comment about this effect, how to use this effect. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the draw mess, and we're just gonna simply apply it onto the top clip or the cutout freeze frame, whatever you have. Now we're gonna go ahead and just simply do a, a very very rough mask i'm just trying to here to show you the very basic idea of how to do it so all you're going to do is you're simply going to select your subject and then cut out your subject again you can also use this for a freeze frame transition so if we go ahead and over here then we go ahead and disable the bottom clip as you can see i just have the subject cut out using the draw mask now we can go over here to my effects either the stroke effect or the outer glow in this case we'll do the outer glow so the ultimate bundle if we scroll down until we find outer glow now again you can use this for the stroke effect or the outer glow so stroke effect or outer glow let's take the outer glow and then apply it onto the clip and then as you can see there we go now you have a really cool like glow effect or outline effect around the subject so you can use this for like I mean, like a youtube thumbnail or you can create one of those really cool freeze frame transitions and apply it onto the clip so the most important thing is is you can't just apply this effect onto your clip you actually have to have like a logo or a text or a cut out of a subject in order for this effect to work anyways those are all the really cool effects transitions and presets that come in my ultimate bundle for final cut pro 10 the link is down in the description if you want to go ahead and purchase it for yourself and before you leave this video make you hit that subscribe button anyways i will see you in the next one peace